So here it is, the Pavo Pico Beta FPB's smallest and lightest drone in the Pavo series of drones. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Pavo series, their Beta FPB's Whoop line, and if you're looking for something a little bit larger, they have you covered it with the Pavo 30 as well as the Pavo 25. Now, I've done full reviews on those drones as well, and I'll leave it linked above and below so you can take a look at it. So, this one here promises to deliver smooth cinematic 4K images even when under 100 grams. So let's open this up and see what you get. All right, so here you go. The first thing you're greeted here with is some propellers and a connector or adapter to connect to your flight controller. You also have another bag here with some, uh, looks like a shield for your O3 camera, a TPU mount here for that, some gummies to mount your canopy and some extra antennas. Pretty awesome, we'll take a look at that as well. Next you have your battery here. This one does include a battery. This is a 2S drone and you have a 450 milliamp hour 2S battery which is good for around four plus minutes of flight time. Besides that, you also have a UV filter on here, which is good to protect the camera, the O3 camera on here. The O3 camera is really, really expensive and there's very limited protection for this camera. So I'm glad that they did include this UV protection or UV filter on here. Now, besides that, you have the drone right here. This thing looks so tiny, guys. Wow, take a look at that, that's awesome. Now last but not least, you have your two canopies on here and this will be used to hold both the O3 air unit and the camera as well. So this is pretty cool, very, very, very light. And uh, this thing here should be the reason why this thing here is so light. Besides that, you have a QR code here. You can go to the website, download the manuals and see what they have to offer here. And let's take a closer look at this drone, the powerful Pico. This thing here is so small. This thing reminds me of the Meteor 75 Pro HD. Uh, in fact, it's the same 45 millimeter blades on here, but this one here is a bigger power, so it has a bigger uh, ESC and also some larger motors on here. So the first thing I notice here is just this carbon fiber frame on here. And this thing holds both the ducts on here, the motors and the flight control. So this is really, really nice. Now talking about the flight control, this one here has a F4 or 5 all-in-one flight controller with a 12 amp ESC, which is pretty cool. Now this flight controller here is a little bit special as well because it also has built-in memory for say gyro flow for logging data. If you want to tune this, you can actually log it in the built-in memory. It also has a barometer in here as well as a built-in receiver. This one has a built-in Express LRS receiver. And although it's on the board, it's not an SPI base. It is a serial based receiver, which is good because you can update the firmware on your receiver separate from the flight controller database. So that's pretty awesome. And I like to see a lot of manufacturers doing that. In fact, you can see the little antenna right here 
for the Express LRS receiver. Pretty awesome, and that makes this thing very compact and light, yet giving me good range. Now mounted to the frame, you have these motors on here. These are the 11 or 2, 14,000 kV motors on here. And we'll see how these behave as far as performance as well as battery life. Now connected to the motors here, you have these Gemfam 3 blade propeller. The same was found on the Meteor 75 Pro. These are a 45 millimeter propellers. And these things are pretty powerful, good performance, and very, very quiet. So we'll see if it's the same here in the Pavo Pico. Now because this is a cinema, we do have these plastic ducts on here. Now this is a PA12 plastic and Beta FP has used this in the past for the Power 30 drone and that has been really successful because of its durability, its flexibility and the lightweightness of this plastic. So this should be very reliable and durable in case of a crash. Now in the event that you do happen to crash this and break the actual ducts on here, Beta FV has made some replacements, giving you some alternate options as well as some different colors. Now you have the transparent color, you also have a transparent gray, and I also have a transparent blue right here. This thing is pretty cool, it has all the accessories to set your flight controller and set your whole drone up, including the antennas for the O3 air unit. So it's pretty cool they install this in here. Now talking about the frame and the ducts, we do have this battery holder on here and this is designed to hold your 2S battery on here. Now if you want to go with a larger capacity battery, Beta F3 says you can just actually cut these two pieces out and then use a battery strap to actually secure and hold the battery in here. And I might actually do that in the near future since I have a little bit larger batteries. I have like a 550 battery or a 650 on there and I might try that to see if I get longer flight time. So that's in the cards here for me to cut this out. Now last but not least, we have two connections on the hair. We have one here for your battery lead. This is an XT30 connector. We talked about the battery here as being a 2S battery, as well as this little harness here. And this is pretty cool by Beta FB. This is the harness that goes into your O3 air unit. So this will be just like a plug and play affair. You just plug this into your O3 air unit and then you're off to the races. This is pretty cool making this drone very modular. And that's the reason why this thing is priced so competitively, guys. The actual O3 air unit is not included in the kit when you do buy it. All you get is the frame kit, the electronics, the motors, the propellers, and all the accessories right here. You do have to provide your VTX for this drone. Now talking about that, the Pavel Pico does support other VTX like the walk snail system, as well as the original air unit from DJI. So they do have you covered in case you want to install those cameras or VTX on this drone. With that said, let's install the DJI O3 into the Pavel Pico and see how this thing here all comes together. I have a new O3 air unit right here. I'm gonna take that out. And this thing here is super light yet powerful. So this is the perfect match for a drone of this size. As you can see, we have this big antenna on here. Now this is a pretty decent antenna by DJI, but because this is such a small and light drone, and this thing does weigh a lot, but Beta FB does have some provisions so you can install this stock antenna to the Power Pico if you want to. I would suggest you actually change it out with the smaller and lightweight antennas. And Beta FB does provide these smaller, really, really small antennas right here. This should still yield some pretty decent performance with the Pavo Pico. So it's as simple as removing these two small screws on here. I think that's it, it should come off. There it is, we'll just leave the screws in there. And we can just pop these connection off. These are UFL connectors. Uh, I don't wanna damage it, but let's, there you go. They both came up pretty easily. So here's antenna one and antenna two, same thing. And that's it guys. Let's reinstall this plate to secure the antennas. All right. Now here's our canopy. We have two of them. We're just gonna use the first one for now. And for right now, I'm just going to remove these stickers on here. These are all warning stickers by DJI. We're just gonna wire or force these two antennas to these little points right here. Wow. That's a good fit. Wow, that looks pretty good, guys. Take a look at that, that's all in the canopy. That's nice, that's pretty good. Okay, time to mount the camera. And one thing to notice here is that the DJI camera has four bolts, two on each side. So there's only provision for one bolt on each side. So you do have to delete one of the bolts. So I'm just gonna remove both for now. And we're just gonna use the top bolt on each side and that should work really well. All right, all right, here's your entire package. This thing looks <laughs> pretty interesting. Pretty interesting, guys, how this small thing does everything. It's so modular. Now, we'll be talking about this a little bit later. We'll be using this DJI O3 area again in another video here. 
and we'll talk about this same kind of principle or concept. So if you want to see that video, hit that subscribe button. You'll be notified whenever I do drop that video. Now it's as easy as just laying this in here. Now, if you did mount this straight on here, all the vibration from the drone is going to transmit to the actual DJI O3 air unit and the camera. And we don't want that. We don't want to have all this vibration in here. What we're going to do here is put some gummies on here, which is also included with the kit. Now this can take a while. All four is in here. Let's see if I can put this canopy on here. Just lay it on here, line up the holes. Now guys, you don't want to over tighten these things because there is some gummies in here and their job is to prevent vibration. So if you torque it down too tight, that vibration is going to be transferred. Wow. <laughs> Look at this thing, guys. Oh man, let's push this wires in here. We've got to work on this wire management a little bit. Pavo Pico, almost done here. Last thing is to plug in your DJI harness into the actual air unit. Wow, that's a clean, tight fit. All right guys, check out this drone. This thing is amazing. I'm gonna put my UV filter on here. This is not anything crazy, but this is actually going to protect your lens. If you want to do some real cinematic fun, you can put a ND filter on here. I've done some reviews on some ND filters in the past. I'll leave that link above and below so you can take a look at it, but that does dramatically change the image quality coming to the O3 camera, guys. So I'm gonna put the battery in here and uh, let's take it for a flight. Let's go outside. Okay, so we're back from our flight test and the Pavo Pico did an amazing job as you saw in the intro video. This thing exceeded my expectations by a long shot, guys. So let's talk about it. So the flight characteristics on this was pretty cool. So I put a battery on here, took it for this first flight, and the first thing I noticed was how easy it was to fly, guys. This thing was pretty much a dream to fly. I won't say it flew itself, but yeah, guys, no, seriously, uh, I flew today with winds between five and 10 miles an hour, and this thing didn't seem phased at all by the winds. And I was totally surprised with that, considering how small and light this drone is. Now, find this how it was designed to be flown. This thing did a pretty amazing job and generated some really, really smooth footage, just totally blown away. Now, I flew this drone on three different camera settings, and we'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about the camera and VTX on this drone. But I bring it up to say that when I flew this drone, the feed in the goggles really doesn't change it doesn't really matter if you change the field of view the thing that really changes on this is if you're going to fly in the log or the normal actual dji colors now i did fly this thing here obviously without stabilization and that's where i did most of my critiquing and seeing how this thing here behaved now guys i didn't see any discernible vibrations or oscillations no jello this thing worked guys surprisingly well. And I said before guys, if you're flying this as it was designed like a cine whoop, you're gonna have a really, really, really good performance with this drone. But if you're gonna fly the Pavo Pico like a freestyle drone, then you're gonna reach the limitations pretty quickly, guys. Now, doing some simple rolls, it was able to handle that. Some smooth and shallow dives, as you saw in the video, it worked out pretty well. But if you're gonna do some power loops or some really aggressive maneuvers, it's gonna show its limitations pretty quickly. Especially when I'm doing power loops here, you get the traditional uh, whoop washout on the bottom end as you're gonna dive out or recover, then it just freaks out a little bit and then just y'all washes out. But that's pretty normal for any kind of drone with these ducks on here. The tuna here is pretty good. The rates are really good and suited for cinematic flying guys. And the honest truth is like this thing here blew me away how easy it was. And if you're gonna fly this thing indoors or outdoors with winds around five to 10 miles an hour, you should have pretty smooth footage and a good flying experience. Okay, since we're talking about the visual of the drone, let's talk about the camera and VTX setup on this Pavo Pico. And this obviously here is the DJI O3 Air unit. Now the Pavo Pico can also accommodate the Waxner Avatar system as well as the original DJI Air unit. Now this, in my opinion, is the best option for this drone since it has a high resolution camera and this big hard drive on here. In fact, I did fly this without an SD card on here. So in case you do forget your SD card, you do have the built-in memory on this uh, VTX as well. It's also 4K and you can also stabilize it in post with the gyro uh, data in gyro flow or you can use the Rocksteady 
from the DJI built-in stabilization in here. So the first thing I noticed when I put the goggles on was how clear the image was. Now I've flown the DJI O3 Air multiple times in the past, but every time I put that goggles on, I fly the O3 Air camera and Air unit, I'm just wowed and impressed with how clear it is. Now I'm shooting here in 4K at 60 frames per second, and that gave a really good feed to my goggles, guys. The image was clear and vibrant. Now I was using the stock factory colors on this. I also flew this in the, I guess the Cinelike or the flat profile, giving you more dynamic range. But overall, when you use the normal color profile, the colors tend to be a little bit darker in the shadows. And there seems to be less, you know, a dynamic range when you're flying in bright conditions like I was flying today. But overall, the image is still pretty clear, very fluid and smooth. And guys, no issues with the O3 camera. Now, this is not a review on the O3 Air unit. I've done a full review on that. I'll leave a link above and below so you can take a look at it. But I just wanted to see how this Air unit here interacted with the Pavo Pico. Now, in that regards, it's pretty cool because you have this nice modular interface here where you can put any other camera or the DJ O3 Air unit on here. But that saves on cost. Now, you're talking about a drone that's very, very light. And this camera setup here is very susceptible to vibrations and resonance. But as I said before earlier in this video, there wasn't any vibration at all coming to the feed, especially when I had the stabilization, the Rocksteady turned off. Now I also did use the Rocksteady and that turned out really, really good. Buttery smooth, guys. I did get the best performance with the ultra wide and the stabilization on. Now, whether you use the factory colors or the flat profile, that's up to you. I did see a little bit more dynamic range with the flat color profile, but it's up to you if you wanna use that and alter it in post in your favorite editor. Having said that, is the image in here good enough for professional shoots? Well, that's kinda up to you. I think the DJI O3 Edit does a really good job. I do think that it is a replacement for an action camera. In fact, this thing here does better than some of the cheaper action cameras on the market. So this does live up to the hype of being a action cam replacement. Now, if you're gonna be on a professional shoot, then you might wanna stick to maybe a GoPro, but a GoPro at that point is too heavy for this small whoop here. But for the most part, you can probably get away with this on a professional shoot if you shoot in the flat color profile and then edit it to your specifications, guys. It works pretty well. Now, this will be kind of ideal in like smaller areas or indoor flying. The best thing about this whole thing here is that it's so small. You can fly this indoors, outdoors among people and there's really no threat, guys. And to be honest with you guys, when you fly smaller drones, especially smaller whoops, tend to be a lot of uh, micro vibrations in there and this didn't seem to have any of that. Now the modular design of this whole Pavo Pico makes it really easy to take off and on the camera for repairs. My only concern is just that this camera here isn't really protected, although they do include the camera hood as well as the UV filter for this camera here. And that's pretty cool that they didn't include that with this drone kit here because this setup here is pretty expensive if you really think about it. And we'll talk about that later when we talk about the price of this whole unit here. But overall, this thing here is really good. The design is really nice, guys. These antennas here are very, very light and compact. And that's another thing. I never had any reception issues with this whole setup here, especially with the O3 Air unit. Now, DJI does make a pretty good product. It does come with that single mass antenna. Now, Beta FB does include this dual linear antennas. They're very, very small, lightweight. And I did crash this drone once or twice, but no issues here with the durability of the antennas. Now, never once did I have any issues with receptions going to my goggles. The image was clear, no stuttering. A really, really clear image, guys. For the performance of this drone here, the O3 unit, as I said before, is a, a perfect match for this, to the point where it feels kind of uncomfortable flying this drone so far, but the performance of the O3 unit makes it very comfortable and is very confident inspiring flying this drone really, really far, guys. Having said that, let's talk about the RX link on the Pablo Pico. Now, this Pablo Pico is equipped with Express LRS on here. And I did fly this drone at around 100 milliwatts. I never wanted to have any issues with receptions, whether it be telemetry or fail safe. Now, this small little antenna on here did a pretty good job. It's just wild little small antenna on here. And I was kind of curious or worried about the durability of this antenna on here but it did a pretty good job. Only time will tell how long this thing here is gonna last, but for the time being, never wanted to have any issues. As I said before with the DJI O3 Air Unit, the same thing applies here with Express LRS. I could fly this drone really far to the point where I was like, wow, I find this kind of like a tiny whoop really, really far, but with Express LRS, you get really good receptions, really low latency, 
and the low chance of fail safe guys last not least let's talk about the battery life on the powerful pico now i flew this thing with the 450 milliamp hour 2s battery and beta fb says that you can get around four minutes or over four minutes of flight time with this drone now while doing normal flying with the powerful pico i average around three minutes and 45 seconds to three minutes and 50 seconds now, i did numerous flights and it always seemed to be around three minutes and 40 to three minutes and 50 seconds in between there so not the four minutes that they claim, but if you did fly this drone in the way it was designed, doing smooth cinematic flying, I did average over four minutes. I did average around four minutes and 20 seconds, four minutes and 25 seconds. Now, one thing I have to say, I did come back to land around 3.3 volts, and I was averaging around, yes, four over four minutes. Now, having said that, the low voltage warning in beta flight was set to under 3.5. Typically, we land our drones around 3.5, but these 1S or 2S batteries can handle a little bit below that, and it is set from the factory to come on around 3.3 volts. Now, having said that, if you go too low on the battery, say around 3.2 or 3.1 volts, there is a chance that your VTX could cut out and you might lose the visuals coming to your goggles. So, so instead of all that, what do I think about the Popo Pico? Well, you know, honestly, at first I was kind of skeptical about this drone. I thought it was another drone that was on the market, trying to be the first to release, trying to kind of reinvent the wheel. But obviously I was wrong with that. This thing is a super capable drone. And as I said before, guys, I think the O3 air unit, if you can afford it, is the best option of package for this little whoop here. Now, this thing here does a really good job. It does deliver producing very smooth and cinematic videos, guys, with very little effort. So if you're gonna fly this thing indoors or even outdoors with light winds between five and 10 miles an hour, I really do think that this is kind of the perfect, sorry to say, it is a kind of perfect drone at least for me, because I want to have a small footprint. It's also very quiet, so it doesn't raise too much attention. So imagine combining those two aspects in flying. You have a small drone that's light, quiet, capable, but yet can deliver big in performance. It really does impress me, guys. And the fact that this thing here weighs under 250 grams, guys, this is kind of a no-brainer. If you're going to do anything for YouTube, then it's already under 250 grams. So it does meet all those requirements going into the future, guys. So I do foresee a lot of companies now trying to make drones lighter. And this one here, honestly, guys, did meet and exceed my expectations. In addition to that, the Pablo Pico here is decently priced, guys. This thing is really affordable, and it seems to be a really good performance for the price. Now, having said that, if you really think about it, it may not be cheap because this whole package here is closer to around $370 to $400. If you think about it, the actual DJI O3 air unit is actually more expensive than the drone itself. So with that said, they, they were smart in making this thing very modular because if you do have an O3 or existing O3 air unit in your closet or on another drone, you can just take it off and just add it to this little drone here with this little cage here. And when you're done, you can take it off. It's very modular. So it's cool that they didn't force you, the pilots, to buy or be obligated to buy the drone with the O3 air unit. That would be really expensive. And then you can just provide the VTX yourself. So with that said, that's pretty cool. And now that I think about it, this hair drone reminds me of my TinyGo 4K, guys. It's very similar. It's a 2S drone. It has a 4K camera. You can stabilize the image. Very, very similar. Something maybe I want to look at in the future, maybe do a comparison video. Let me know if that's something that you're interested in. Now, this thing here, I said before, the price is really, really good, and that's indicative of the sales of this drone. At the time of filming, there's none of the Pablo Pico available in any of the stores. They're all sold out, including Beta FPV. Now, they did contact me and said that this was gonna be available here in the near future, maybe the next day or two. So if you're just slightly or remotely interested in the Pablo Pico, I would highly recommend you take a look at it and probably try to buy it before they're all gone again. I've said that I'll leave links to all these products down below so you can take a look at it, including this frame kit here in case you miss out on the next batch of Pablo Pico. You can actually buy your own frame, put the electronics on here, put the motors on here and build it for yourself. Everything here is included, including the frame and even the antennas for the O3 air unit if you want to go that route. So the frame kit here is pretty much complete, just needs a flight controller and the motors. I'll leave links to all these down below. So let me know what you think about the Pablo Pico, guys. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.